Vandiyadeva was amazed at how cleverly the doors of the secret passageways were arranged in the Kadampur Palace. A person who has only half knowledge of them may be in danger if he tries to climb or disembark hastily. If the crocodile moves while going down the half steps, it should be caught on the wall and crushed. After waiting to see if the crocodile was standing still, Vandiyathevan came to the hole and went to put his foot down. Cow! What is that? Footsteps are heard in the other way. Who is coming? Maybe all were Kadia. Is he looking for himself? Better to stop him from coming here. No, no, there is no one coming. Footsteps sound like five or six people coming. So it could be I Tumpankari and his associates. Vandiyadeva ran away in one leap and again disappeared behind the tailless monkey. Aha! Did we leave the secret passage open? Does that raise any doubts? No, no. The road was open when we arrived. It was only after we got to the top that the road closed. So it was good to be open. A head is visible through the hole. It is the head of Itumbangkari. Here he stands on one leg and looks around. Only one leg is down. It's as if he's keeping one foot on the bottom step so that the hole doesn't close on its own. Adide. What a light on this page. The elephant face on the wall is moving away. The way is clear. Who is coming through that door? It is not Manamegalai, but she is carrying a lamp in her hand. Itumpankari is coming up in one leap, the way he came closes. Itumpankari takes his turban cloth and hurriedly starts patting the dust from the nearby tiger. What is the conclusion of this play? She picked up the hourglass hand lamp and looked around. When her eyes fell on Itumpankari, she looked at him in wonder. Itumpankari stopped dusting and looked at Manamekali in amazement in return. Mother! What is this? Why did you come here at this time? He said. Itumba! Is that you? What are you doing? She asked Manamegali. Mother! Shouldn't we bring the guests to this hunting hall and show them to them tomorrow? I am cleaning for them. The little master was led like that when he went to Kanchi. Yes, Idumba. In this palace, the little master trusts you and me. I was making sure that the room where Rainiamal of Palvur was going to stay was arranged properly. Then I heard something here. I thought it must be you. Who else knows the secret ways of this palace? How long have you been working here? A Najakai is above, mother. There is still a Najakai to work on. You came here alone. Where is that singing girl Chandramati? I heard a noise and told her to go and get her father. Are you here? I'll go and stop her. Saying this. She picked up Manamegali's lamp and noticed the change in Itumpankari's face. Next, Waylilik looked at the monkey. She watched as it shook, as it did the previous time. Yes, mother. Master has so much to do today, tell him not to go and call him and lie down in peace. I will take care of all the work myself, said Itumpankari. Manamegali went back in the way she came and closed the secret door. I Tumpankari went to the elephant's face and listened intently to the wall for a while. After making sure that there was no noise in the next room, he came back. He stood waist deep down the steps, keeping the gate open. An owl's voice was heard from inside the gate. In response, I Tumpankari gave an oolish voice. He heard the sound of people walking in the other direction. Then things happened very quickly. A bat flapped its wings and flew away. I Tumpankari saw it. A tailless monkey fell on him from behind as Tuttle. The sudden speed of its fall made I Tumpankari's knees buckle and he stumbled. So he had to go down two more steps. At first I Tumpankari didn't know what had fallen on him, so he threw up his hands and ran away. Then it turns out that the lifeless tailless monkey has somehow tripped and fallen on top of him. He plucked up the courage to stop it. Meanwhile, Two eyes like living human arms reached up into the hole and pushed him down further. I Tumpankari couldn't believe it. For a moment a great panic gripped him. He looked up and down again. 
Wailalik observed that the monkey had descended head down into the tunnel, and that after coming down half its body, the tunnel door was approaching. He made sure that what appeared to be two human hands must be his mental brandy. By this time, the people who had come to pilot Huvar had come closer. Ravi Dasan, who came in front, said, Father. What is this, why are you beating and screaming like this? Is there any danger? Shall we go back? He asked. No, no. There is no danger. As I was opening the trap door, this giant monkey somehow moved and fell on my head. I panicked for a moment. Now this monkey is blocking the way, neither going up nor coming down. Hold on, I will remove this monkey and clear the way. I Tumpankari said. The Nears would have guessed whose hands pushed the stumbling I Tumpankari from above. Vandiyadeva's luck was on his side even in this case. He came up with the right strategy at the right time. The moment I Tumpankari saw the bat standing on the steps of Philathvarat, he pushed the tailless monkey on his head. Then he stood so that he could not see his face and held him with his hands and pressed him down. After that Wailalik also pushed the monkey upside down into the hole. Finally, he moved the crocodile too. Having done all this in a few moments, Vandiyadeva ran away with the elephant's trunk. He grabbed the tusks and twisted them with all his might. There was a way through the wall but not as wide as the Manamegala came from inside. Circular narrow passage, it could be a door inside a door. Now is not the time to think about how to open the whole door. By then, the conspirators may enter the hunting hall and escape will become rare. Therefore, even if the open way is a narrow one, it must be entered. Daring to carry out the task as decided, Vandiyadeva entered the circular hole. His head, arms and half of his body came inside. The other half of the body was trying to get inside. There was nothing to grasp with the hands. At this time, the lamp inside went out and it was dark. Vandiyathevan said in a voice of fear, Chandramati. Chandramati. Save me. He said. A girl's voice was heard laughing cheerfully. Chandramati. Are you here to have fun? Is this good? Laughter again instead, followed by is it good for you to sneak into that temple like this? Said a woman's voice. Vandiyathevan knew that it was the voice of Manamekalai but deliberately Chandramati. I came only because you told me to come. People are coming behind me. Take me away quickly or disaster will come. He said. Can Chandramati be such a bitch? Let me teach you in her wisdom. Oh. Are you Princess Manamegalai? Mother. Please forgive me just this once. I will never do such a mistake again. You have a million blessings. Vandiyathevan begged. In the darkness, two thin arms grabbed Vandiyadeva's shoulders and gently lowered him to the ground. The hole in the wall is covered. Princess. Congratulations to you. He said. Hang on. Just know what I'm going to do to you. Whatever you have done to me is right. You have saved me from the murderers. That is enough. I will be blessed if I die by their wrists rather than by the hands of those monsters. Oh, father! Are you a great hero? Who are the killers who are looking for you? Wait a little first, let me light the lamp and see what your face looks like. Amini! Do you want to see my face again? My face is the monkey face you saw behind them when you looked in the mirror. Did Chandramati paint it? Vandiyathevan said. In the dark they heard the sound of laughter and the sound of shaking hands. When Vandiyathevan stuck his head into the room, she shut off the lamp that was burning in the room. And so it became dark, now when its lid was removed the lamp lit up and glowed. As she saw Vandiyadeva's face in its light, she stood mesmerized by the hourglass. The sound of many people stumbling into the nearby hunting hall was heard at that time. 